Is it possible to win a championship with JUCO recruits only? They can only be in college for two or three years, but that's my goal for today's video, and the rules for this challenge are pretty straightforward. I can only recruit JUCO players, jump into three games a season, and our roster has to start from scratch. That won't be too bad since I'm rolling with Memphis, but nobody on their current roster is sticking around, and that makes this first recruiting period very important. Right now, the Tigers are in the American Conference, and I just chose them because their jerseys are sick, so we'll see if that's enough to get recruits to want to come here, and the search for JUCOs has begun. Unfortunately, there's no way to filter for him on this game. So it's going to take me ages to fill up our recruiting board, but I think I found some good prospects. Again, we have no players on our roster next year, so we have to build a full starting lineup. And every time one of these players busts, there's no way that I can keep them around because we're only going to have them for a couple of seasons. The problem with JUCOs is by the time they get to Memphis, they're either sophomores or juniors. And that's not great for a rebuild, especially when we're not supposed to be good in these next three seasons. To make recruiting harder, I've started as a level three head coach, and I really don't know if it's going to be possible to win a championship like this as Dunner Gunn's the only quarterback I could find. With that scouting not going well, we'd have to move an athlete there like Josh Hill, and I'm gonna target some very high overalls, but the issue is they can't stick around forever. Even if they wanna come here, we'd only have them for a couple of years. And even though I found him so early on, we're gonna lose this 82 overall middle linebacker to Fresno State, while this tackle would much rather play for Tennessee. A week later, the same thing would happen to cornerback BJ Joseph the second that the Alabama Crimson Tide showed any interest in him. And I'm starting to realize that we should focus on filling all these roster spots instead of going for the high overalls. I mean, right now, we are in the lead for some high overall players that I think we're going to get, but as I scroll down the board, you're going to see a lot of other types of prospects, and that includes some 67 overalls that would probably not start for another team. We need anything that we can get, so I'm scheduling visits as soon as possible. And once these guys eventually decide to come to Memphis, I need to line up some more prospects for us. It's definitely going to be a pain to search for JUCOs throughout this entire video, but I can always find them by doing this. And it's a shame that we have a deal breaker on this three-star sophomore running back. All we recruit is JUCOs, and these guys still still don't want to come here. But to make matters worse, I just realized that the only Juco outside linebacker on this game is a one-star recruit. I don't know if this rebuild's going to be possible, but we have signed athlete Josh Hill, who I said earlier on was going to act as our quarterback. And it certainly wasn't easy to do, but I ended up finding some more gyms as I searched for more players. I even got my first coach upgrade, which means we can put more points into the final weeks. And as I continue to advance, we keep getting more commits. What was surprisingly nice is we seem to be the only school going after most of these Juco recruits. But then again, Baylor decided they wanted this 67 overall. And the computer has some weird strategies because to end the year, we are in a tight battle for this 59 overall linebacker. I'm not too concerned considering the two highest overall players left on our board committed. And then to end the regular season, we also got Eric Dixon. But after an entire season of recruiting, the only team need we were able to meet was our defensive tackle one. And the offseason period will determine if we get some of these other prospects. I know I didn't do well enough to build an entire starting lineup. And to make matters worse, I'm going to get fired so many times, which is not good because every time that happens after we start my coach, Coach, and that means going back down to a level three with almost no recruiting advantages. We'd actually get a couple of transfers, but I feel like it would be cheating if I used them. So I had to decline them, and this is how I divvied up our off-season points. It worked really well as we were able to sign six more guys, but even with a class of 23 players, our rank was down at number 70. And the fact that these JUCOs are only going to be at our school for two to three seasons means we need to have success immediately. Athlete Joel Thomas is only a sophomore, and he actually plays at linebacker, which we really needed. And then since we didn't find a single QB, of course, we'll have to move Josh Hill over there, but we only have him for two years. What I'm most proud about is I did go a little overboard as I have built an entire starting offensive line of JUCOs. And I know A.O. Campbell is a rare linebacker, but he's an even better defensive end. This team has zero DBs though, as the only one I recruited was free safety Joe Garrett. And I also forgot about a kicker and a punter, so we had to get some walk-ons there. Now, ideally the walk-ons wouldn't even exist, but I'm not going to be able to cut them until we get farther into the future. And I really don't know how I want to handle redshirting, but I think I'm going to do it to any player that's a JUCO sophomore. It ended up only being four players, but with an outlook like this, we might want them in the future. And I can guarantee that I'll make sure Tennessee's on our schedule every year. But before we jump into season two, I have to find a whole new list of prospects and there's a Juco quarterback. If we can actually get him, I'm excited about Cortez Gibson because he's a 78 overall. And I found these two outside linebacker gyms that we're going to target. But after that, it's just going to be cornerbacks and athletes because those are the types of players that we need. 82 overall Kevin Lundy is a dream prospect because this kid can play on both the offensive and defensive side of things, and we desperately need that considering this is what our starting corner room looks like. Somehow, with the 40 overall walk-ons, we're not supposed to be the worst team in the country, but I have a hard time believing we're going to win any games in the American, and we can't get attached to quarterback Josh Hill for too long because he's gone after next year, and it looks like this is going to be a battle for his replacement. Once we get past this first period of removing prospects that we're not going to get, that's when our board really starts to open up, and I did find a couple of other quarterbacks just in case we don't get who we wanted, so thank goodness for two-star Stanley Cooper. 
Sure. Going into season two, we've built a 59 overall team, but the reason it's so low is because we have zero defensive backs and Army was able to take advantage of it. My only goal is to make sure that I don't get fired and recruiting keeps going better as I found this plus 10 gym at guard and no other schools are going after him. Every week I scout one more player and the same thing keeps on happening. So that's exciting and I want to hop into my first game. Even if we're going to lose, I just wanted to see our jerseys and I'm surprised that this many fans have come out to watch us in the rain. Going into the fourth quarter, it was 42 to 10 and we'd lose by even more. So it's not like the fans got a good showing, but it's going to be like this for a long time until we can get some better prospects to our school. We have a lot of depth that we still have to build up too. So at least for now, our defense is going to get destroyed by mid quarterbacks. And I was just curious if it was going to even be possible for us to get wins this year. It might not be, but New Mexico is known for not being good at football and they still beat us by 35. This is why we're replacing our quarterback almost immediately. And I think if we want to get him to commit, we should schedule him for a visit versus Youngstown State. Since they're an FCS school, that's the only matchup that I could see going in our favor. And our non-existent defense is going to have to step up. I think we have to win or else I'm definitely getting fired. And starting my coach over from scratch year after year is not enjoyable. We probably wouldn't have lost out on this kicker if I didn't have to, but at least we did sign these two commits. And it turns out Andrew Jones can play literally anywhere on the field. I can't make the mistake of not going after a kicker again though, so I'm going to get Kevin Gibbons. And I can't get over how good these jerseys are. Whenever we eventually end up winning, we're going to do it in style. And I'm trying so hard to not get attached to any of these guys since we won't have them long, but it's going to be hard to forget about our quarterback that can't make a pass in a defense that's already given up seven. Luckily, we would hold them on their second drive, and this time around, we're also able to complete that to Sims. So maybe Josh Hill's starting to figure things out, and that man-to-man -man coverage didn't stick. It looks like the Penguins are going to score the next point, but we have an opportunity to end this first half in the right way, and that takes us down to the 26. I'm really hoping that we're able to take a lead here. I'm going to try to thread the needle, which worked. And all I can think about is the visiting recruits that we need to land. I'm going to try to step up in the pocket, and there we go. Josh Hill is solid on the ground if he can't make a pass. But I'm not sure if I can even say that because throughout this game, I've been getting a better feel for him. And then he does stupid stuff like that. After three straight field goals from Youngstown State, we find ourselves down by five and they make it worse. We could not give up a touchdown right there. Now we're in a lot of trouble. And are you kidding me? I don't think the game wanted us to get our first win. And our Juco lineup still couldn't play defense. Our guys aren't even at our school long enough to develop them, which is an issue. And we didn't land Cortez Gibson, but we did get a tight end in this cornerback that we desperately needed. So that's not too bad. And I'm looking for any prospects to add to our board last second, but they don't want to come here. Eventually, there would be some players, and I'm just going to go through scouting them all, hoping for some gems. And I didn't find any, but these two players would definitely add to our offense. By now, I've kind of accepted that I'm going to get fired again. So the results of the rest of our games in Season 2 don't matter that much. But what does is we just signed the highest overall recruit in school history, and I knew going after athletes was the right decision. We now have 6'5 athlete Kevin Lundy who can do almost anything. To end the year, the only battle that we're really in is for defensive end Ryan Simpson. But what you might notice is Cortez Gibson's no longer up there and that's because he committed alongside Bobby James and I don't even care that we lost out on these two guys. We'd also only lose to Tulane by three so that shows that we are starting to compete a little bit better but we do finish the season 0-12 and, and that puts us far below every other team in our conference. Going into the offseason you're gonna see that we're still in a tight one for Ryan Simpson but I'm not worried about it. We've landed so many other players that I wasn't sure we'd get and that includes Kevin Gibbons a kicker. Getting fired again though could mess with some stuff because it can cause players to transfer out but it says no players are leaving our school. And once again, I have to decline the players that want to transfer in, but these guys aren't any good. My plan for off-season recruiting is to just make sure that we get these four guys. And that's exactly what ended up happening. But somehow this recruiting class was ranked even lower than our last one. And I couldn't tell you how, because I think the players that we found in it are even better than before. There's literally seven athletes that I get to move around to different positions. And our 78 overall quarterback, Cortez Gibson's only a sophomore. Now it's time for me to decide all these guys' positions. And Kevin Lundy is clearly going to be a wide receiver more than anything else. But I want to make it very clear, I think a lot of these guys are going to play on both sides of the ball. And 6'5 athlete Andrew Reese is going to make for a great wide receiver. Another thing I'm doing is moving free safety Joe Garrett over to strong safety, and then putting Andrew Jones at free safety, who's only going to be a junior. There's a lot of moving pieces. Joe Corbett becomes a 79 quarterback and halfback. But by the end of all of this, I feel like we filled a lot of positional needs that we had, and the training results have come in, but I'm seeing a lot of plus fours and plus threes. That's not great, but now I have to make make the big decision on how we handle future red shirts. And I think I'm going to push our success to the future by letting Cortez Gibson sit for a season. Alongside that, anybody that's not going to be a starter will get the same treatment. And the reason for that is I need to have other players around when all of our guys graduate as we're losing a lot this year. I will say our DB room isn't looking great, but it's definitely better than it was in the previous season. And our schedule starts off extremely tough, but I'm hoping after that things will get better. And the strongest player in the country is a Juco sophomore. It's no surprise he ended up being an 81 overall, but I'm not sure if we're going to be able to him. And you 
might think most of our team needs are met, but we're losing players every two seasons. I am proud to say that we're already up to a 79 overall though, because I think that's the quickest that I've ever rebuilt a team in NCAA football to a decent overall. And I know we're going to lose games like that. There's a reason we're still projected to be the worst team, but I honestly don't believe that we're going to finish at the bottom of our conference. And I'm proud to say that our recruiting board is coming together pretty well with a couple of guards on there, an outside linebacker, two athletes, and then Shane Johnson. Travis Weaver can clearly play anywhere on offense, but Marquez Kelly looks like he might be a guard or a defensive lineman. And I love all the variety you can get out of athletes, but what I'd really love is if we could beat Middle Tennessee State. And with Josh Hill being a senior, he should be a little bit better at threading the needle. He was able to find Marcus Daniels to put us up by four. And our defense has been a little bit better now that we have some cornerbacks, but it's still not perfect. And on third and goal, we're going to get out there and hopefully make the tackle. This is an in-state matchup, so it means something. And with four minutes left, we still have a one-point lead, but they're going to score a tutty. I don't know what our defenders were doing there. They should have just put their hands up. And I'm going to be very frustrated if that cost us the game, but we should have scored more than 14 points in the first place. And I'm going to take that wheel route. It was open, but our offensive line didn't hold for long enough. So now we have to punt it and get a defensive stop. At least the bounce is going to pin them inside what looks like about the 30 or the 40. And the Blue Raiders have dominated us, but not all hope is lost yet. We could still stop them. And that's a great route. What it's probably going to come down to is whether or not this is field goal range for them. And that's going to be intercepted. We have gotten the defensive stop that we needed. It was none other than Junior Juco, Dallas Moore, who came away with it. He's new to this team and we're trying to beat them deep, which worked. Eric Dixon laid out for the ball. And if we score, I want to go for the two point conversion. I have a play that I think will work really well. And it's this exact one that we're going to have to do again, but we have to get into the end zone first. And with a lot of time back there in the pocket, I'm going to make the late read. However, our guy didn't turn around. So what should have been the game tying touchdown actually wasn't. And there's Kevin Lundy catching his first touchdown in his career. Now it's time for the two point conversion play. And we do have the halfback angle route, but I didn't know our backup was going to be in to catch it. And I swear if they get into field goal range, I am going to be so upset. It looks like they're already going with the Hail Mary and that is going to be deflected into a draw. So we were this close to just losing our lead to Middle Tennessee State. And I think we need to send like five players at their quarterback this time. I don't want to have him get this off. He gets it out though still, and that's going to be caught. Luckily, we have survived getting our first win in this rebuild, but they definitely made us work for it. And that should give me a better chance at keeping my job because I am so sick of restarting my coach tree every season. The next team on our schedule is Vanderbilt. So we're facing every program in the state of Tennessee and they blew us out. That's not really ideal, but what is is our recruiting board because right now I've been able to put points on 15 different prospects and so far it seems like we're going to be able to land every single one of them. To increase those odds, they're going to come on a visit versus FAU and we're only a couple of overalls worse than them. We need to have an impressive defensive game, but that's pretty standard if we're going to win anyway. And I got to say, it's rained quite a bit here in Tennessee. Believe it or not, it's actually a good thing as we've had a ton of success running the ball and we've had a two to three possession lead for the entire thing. So we're just trying to close it out and we do. That touchdown puts us back up by 18 points and I'm really happy with the win we just got. It was mainly because Josh Hill was so dominant on the ground and the commits might not be flooding in yet, but we did sign five players, including DJ Patrick, a really good linebacker. And for the rest of these guys, it's only a matter of time before they decide on just coming to Memphis. Now, if we're able to take down Navy, we might actually have a shot at making the American Championship this year. But like expected, we dropped one and all these teams' overalls are just a few higher than ours. Youngstown State's overall is much lower though. So that makes this game perfect for anybody that hasn't visited our school yet. And it's about time I went on a search to find some more prospects at this point in the year. This has worked out for us in the past, so it could again as we find a 76. But at the same time, some of these lower options are so much worse, and that's probably because they're like one-star players. I'm just hoping that we don't lose the game to the FCS school, and we don't. So that's a nice change of pace considering they beat us last year, and North Texas just did. Because we redshirt Cortez Gibson and then started senior Josh Hill, the season's pretty much going exactly how I expected it to, but all I cared about was making sure I didn't get fired. And I don't think they're going to be able to get rid of me considering we've picked up some wins and also some really good prospects and that includes Travis Weaver and Shane Johnson. Of what's left after that, it's probably just a bunch of players that are going to be depth pieces for us. So we can advance a few weeks into the future, but not many schools seem to go after JUCOs. That's one thing I've learned is we haven't been in many recruiting battles, but on the field, it's a different story. We're in battle after battle and we never win. In the span of those few weeks, we also lost out on these three guys. So I don't know what I was talking about. And I'm about to do the most creative thing in the world to get back into the battle on Quinn Fry. I'm extremely close to leveling up and I have to do it if I want to unlock one more coach upgrade. So even though I can't go after these players because they're not Jukos, I'm going to scout them. And when we get a gym, that's going to help me get an upgrade. Well, it's taken a little bit longer than I thought it would, but eventually we have got to get something and there it is. Now I have a coach upgrade that I can put onto Locksmith. And I don't know why I feel so smart for this or even care about going after this recruit. He's a 69 overall, but I swear we are getting this tight end.
As for how we finish out the rest of this season, it'd be nice to win one more game, and we do. But then Alex Taylor committed to BYU, and Quinn Fry locked us out again. I got too cocky to end the season. Our recruiting class didn't finish as well as I thought it might. But picking up another win means that we're going to finish mid-table like I predicted. And of course, they have no reason to fire me. We even ended up signing Matt Tremblay, who could start at halfback for us in the future. And I think I forgot to go over season stats last year, but both times Josh Hill has thrown 19 interceptions. That is atrocious, so it's a good thing he made up for it on the ground. And 6'5 receiver Kevin Lundy was the only player that did well receiving-wise. Tennessee would have the Heisman winner, but at least he's a senior. And I told you all, don't get too attached to any of our players, because they're only going to be around for a couple of seasons. From here on out, we should have better halfbacks than Jeremy was, though. And I don't know why these low overalls think that I'm going to want them to transfer to our program. I will sign these two guys in the offseason, though. And like expected, their names are yellow. Our class is going to be ranked at number 91, though. And that's so disrespectful to these Juco prospects that are actually really solid. What I am starting to pick up on is signing these Juco sophomores is so much more valuable than any other recruit. And athlete Marquez Kelly is going to be with us for a while over at the right tackle position. As for Travis Weaver, he's going to make for a great wide receiver. And we actually need more of them, so it's a good thing that Ed Cody becomes a 79 from a 69. One thing we're still kind of struggling with is having enough DBs, but I think we're going to have it figured out. And the only reason for that is because we recruited so many athletes. There are only hope if we're ever going to win a championship, and A.O. Campbell's up to a 90 overall. He was a sophomore at one point that we redshirted, and now we have him for two more seasons, so I'm going to do the same thing, redshirting any Juco sophomore on our roster. Additionally, any players that aren't going to play for us could use an extra year of eligibility, and that could cause us to have some depth issues this season, but I'm not worried about it. Well, for the first time in my recruiting history, I am struggling to find enough people to fill our board, and that's because so many different Juco's have deal breakers that we can't get around, but it's always because of playing time, even though we do have some open spots on our roster. I mean, it makes logical sense. Juco's are going to want to automatically start wherever they end up choosing to go to college, but it made it a hassle to find 35 prospects, and I'm going to make sure we get a kicker and a punter this season. What's nice is we're already up to an 83 overall, but I'm not sure how high we can get before that starts to level out, and there's certainly a cap to how good we can be, but we should be way higher than the 100th best team in the country. If Tennessee is going to stay this good, I'm not going to expect us to beat them for a long time, and Nico needs to go on to the NFL because this stat line's ridiculous. Our recruiting board turned out like this with a bunch of athletes up near the top. You're going to see that along with quarterback Ryan Fisher and then athlete Larry Jackson, who's actually the first four-star recruit I've found that's a Juco. I didn't even know it was possible, but apparently Aaron Stewart is as well. And it's a shame we have to play hard teams to start the year. I know it's weird calling Vanderbilt a hard team, but they are higher overall than us. And I'm just glad we face FCS school Chattanooga next where we go out and barely beat them. It was a good showing from our sophomore quarterback that just had a redshirt year. So I'm happy with how Cortez Gibson's playing, but I think we need to change multiple things playbook wise, and that includes both our offense and our defense. We have a really solid four man front, so I don't know why we've been rolling with just three. And I'm proud to say we're a much higher overall than the Blue Raiders this season. Everybody on our team should continue to improve as well, but I'm surprised to say that we're in three different recruiting battles, and I hope that we don't lose to any of these teams. We need somebody that's accurate, like Ryan Fisher, to replace our current QB, but that might not work because we still have a few seasons with Cortez Gibson, and trying to keep Juco's around for as long as possible is just hurt in my brain. I do know it's beneficial though because Cortez has been incredible so far and I wish Kevin Lundy wasn't already a senior. It's also super neat how we were able to get this good this quick in a rebuild. Maybe recruiting all Jucos is a strategy I move going forward and if this player wouldn't have dropped this football I would have been so upset. We were all over him and were about to go up by two possessions so I don't think Middle Tennessee State has much of a chance here but they'd score the next 13 points so maybe they do. I'm embarrassed we let it get this close after how we started but we should still be fine. It's third and 16 and they just ran it. From there, we'd have no issues closing it out as we'd score multiple more touchdowns, and that's going to put us back at 500, and this could be the most important game in this rebuild yet. If East Carolina hadn't already lost, they'd be ranked right now because their team is super good, but that's why I'm scheduling these seven biggest prospects for a visit against the Pirates, and I'm even putting a coach point into royal treatment for this as well. If we're going to make a splash in recruiting, this is how we do it, and of course, since we're playing at home, it's raining, so it must rain a lot more in Tennessee than it ever did when I lived in Kentucky. So far, they have flown down the field against us, which isn't a great sign, but I think our offense has what it takes to keep up with theirs, and how on earth did their quarterback get out of there? This flag's gonna need to be on them. We need it super bad, but it was offsides. They accepted it, and that was almost picked. We've seen Dallas Moore hold on to those before, but he couldn't quite do it there, and on third and five, I just can't let this drag get open. I know that they wanted to take it. We forced the fumble. Gatewood is able to pick it up, and that is how you get a defensive stop, which will hopefully lead to some points on this drive as the corner route got open for us. It has taken a while to move it down the field, but we have it on a third and 12 and our tight end drops it. So we have to attempt this long field goal with our senior kicker and it is going to hit off the bottom post. That 
is crushing. I thought we were definitely gonna have it there, but at least we got another stop. And on this drive, I'm hoping that we don't have to deal with more dropping issues. I see our corner route was open, but we just can't get a foot in. I might be delusional to attempt another field goal after how the last one went, but that's enough. And to end the first half, I think we're gonna go up 10 to zero. This entire game has been all about our defense and we are using a pocket passing quarterback. So I'm breaking the stereotype that I only use scramblers and rebuilds, but now we're faced with a third and goal and that's gonna be a big one to start the fourth quarter. I'm gonna do my best not to force anything if it's not there, but I did anyway and it was swatted. So we're simply just gonna kick another field goal. And if we could just hold on to our lead, it would all be over, but our defense choked there. And I don't know why their quarterback stopped running. He literally had the easiest touchdown in the world, but they just get it on the next play and they're not going for the onside kick. They're sending it deep. So that means we can run out the clock. All we have to do is pick up 10 yards on the ground, which shouldn't be too difficult to do. Corbett gets nine and East Carolina never took their first time out, which is surprising. Eventually they would start to burn them, but it's not going to make a difference as we get more yards. And that has to be an impressive win for the visiting recruits. And it was as we were able to steal Chris Simpson from Michigan and Ryan Fisher from Notre Dame. With American conference games being the rest of our schedule, I do think we have a chance to make the conference championship, but I'm only able to hop into one more matchup. So we're going to need a lot of simulations to go in our favor. And that one did by seven. Right now, the game on our schedule that I really want to hop into is the one against Rice because they're ranked 15th. But I don't know if that's going to be the case by the time we get to that game and North Texas beat us by 15. We were better than them, but it didn't make a difference as now they're sitting on top of our conference. And surely against one and seven Tulsa, we can get a win against them as we do by three. That was apparently very attractive to all these recruits because that's what made them want to play for Memphis. And it's safe to say that we've already gotten every single player in this class that we wanted to go after, including 81 overall athlete Larry Jackson. At this rate, I just have to hope that we still only have one conference loss by the time we get to the Rice game, but that's going to be a lot easier said than done because we have three matchups beforehand. UTSA is a good program and they take us down. That pretty much solidifies that we're not going to make the American Conference Championship, but as long as we get one more win, we will make a bowl game, so that's what's going to happen here. That's an important stepping stone that you can't just skip right over, and even if we don't have any chance at making the Conference Championship, I'm very happy with how things are going besides the fact that we lost the 78 overall guard to Purdue. I don't think there's any reason to hop into our final game because nothing's on the line. We've already made a bowl, but this would be an impressive win and we got it in overtime. We've certainly proven that you can compete with just Juco athletes, but the next step is winning our conference and Cortez Gibson still has two more seasons. That's exciting and I'm happy that we're going to have halfback Joe Corbett for another year, but one player we won't is Kevin Lundy and he finished this season with 15 touchdowns. It's a shame that most of these Jucos have such short careers, but hopefully he can help us win our first bowl. And this is a tough matchup. I am not a fan of having to play Florida State here because this is the highest overall team that we've had to face besides Tennessee. And let's just say, I don't think we were ready for this offensively. We've really struggled, but Kevin Lundy is going to get open and that's going to go to the 30. So we're still on pace to get some points before the half and they just leave him open every time. That has not been true for most of this game as they're going to make the tackle, but it allows us to run down the clock before we eventually punch it in. And we've had a really good drive to open up this third quarter. I really just wanted to see if we could compete with some of the higher overall teams like Florida State, because eventually if we make it to the playoffs, we're going to have to. And even if they'd score three straight touchdowns on us, taking full control of this game, I'm excited for the future here at Memphis. And I'm just going to send up one more prayer, hoping for the best. If this works out, maybe we still have a chance, but I didn't think it would. And now we might just have to lock in. As you can see, there's been a lot of frustrating things that happen like that, but Andrew Reese is going to get it back within 10. And I might as well go for the onside kick, which Florida State is unfortunately going to recover. I think their goal is just to run out the clock against us as we make the tackle, but they can't do it quite yet. And they are passing it on third and eight where they are not going to run out of bounds. They've gotten it and that's game. It was always going to be a long shot to come back there, but we've still taken some steps forward as a program. And I just hate to see so many of our starters leave, including Marcus Daniels, Ryan Simpson, and Kevin Lundy. We've replaced them with the top class in the conference, ranking in at number 35. So that's at least something to be excited about. And I think Larry Jackson's going to end up being a wide receiver for us. I also clearly focused on getting sophomore Jucos more than anything else this season, because this time we have nine of them. And the quality of athletes that we just picked up is insane. Even Marcus Washington goes up to a 75 overall. When it comes to where to put some of these guys, players like Larry Jackson are a no-brainer. But then you have ones like Devin Garrett that could play quarterback, halfback, wide receiver, or also on the defensive side of things. And I think we're going to make him a corner. We actually need a lot of them. And Aaron Stewart is just going to be a halfback. While Maurice Jacobs could be a quarterback or a halfback, but instead he's going to start at free safety. That leaves us with Brian Thomas. And I think we're going to put him at wide receiver, but I don't know how I feel about all of that. And besides Cortez Gibson, all of our other top players are clearly seniors. We either have to somehow win it all this season or put together an insane recruiting class because we're losing almost all of our starting offensive and defensive line. And I under recruited at those positions 
decisions while over recruiting at ones like halfback. I can't even redshirt Ryan Fisher because we have no other options at QB. And if the search for their replacements doesn't go well, we could have a rough few years in front of us. I'm very happy to see that we're an 88 overall though, because normally that's not enough to win your conference, but we play in the American. And now we're supposed to be the number 62 team in the country. I think we'll finish much higher than that, especially if we can beat Vanderbilt in our first matchup. And when it comes to recruiting, you're going to see a lot of big guys on our board because those are the positions that we have to fill. But we also need two tight ends, and I think we're only getting one. For whatever reason, 81 overall Chaz Henry would much rather play for Army. And I think it's because he's from New York, but it's affecting our chances of getting him. And we should not have been in such a close game with Chattanooga, but we're still undefeated going into Tennessee. And in case this doesn't go well, I'm going to schedule a visit week whenever we take on USF. That would allow us to bounce back pretty quickly, but I think we have a chance. So we're just going to have to go out and play almost perfectly. Tennessee is a playoff caliber opponent, and they no longer have their star quarterback that they did the past few years. So that should help us out defensively a ton. And so far, the volunteers have not had an answer for our offense. We haven't been able to run it well, but passing wise, we have absolutely flown down the field. And there's Ed Cody holding on to put us up by seven. I know that our team overall might not be the highest, but we have a lot of experience on this roster. And they actually almost caught that. Luckily, they didn't though. And on third and eight, they've run with man-to-man -man coverage. I feel like we should be able to take the top off of their defense. And I probably shouldn't have been so aggressive. We should have just taken our first down because now they've driven it down the field. Campbell has not been able to get a sack, but that's why you have multiple good defensive linemen. And a 51-yard field goal is not a gimme as that has just enough. It turns out that they have a pretty solid kicker, but they don't have solid coverage on third down. And with all the experience that we have on this roster, I don't think we're going to have any issues scoring again. Besides our quarterback, we pretty much have all seniors on the field and that is a laser. So going into the half, it's going to be 14 to 3. And we have opened up the third quarter on fire. I'm trusting our offense and that's a great throw over to Reese. Cortez Gibson's done a great job so far. And either we're a playoff level team or Tennessee is just not as good as they have been in years past. They're going to dump it off on third and 18, but they're not picking this up. So we've gotten another defensive stop. And by the end of the game, Tennessee would score a little bit, but not enough to make this a contest. They don't even have a chance with this final pass. And we are going to get one more turnover, another interception from them. So it's nice to see us finally take down the Volunteers. And Cortez Gibson deserves player of the game. Maybe that'll be the difference maker that makes Chaz Henry want to come here. And Army just had their visit week, so this is a very winnable battle. On top of that, if you look at the AP poll, you'll see that we're ranked for the first time. And our visit week's against USF, who's 0-4. So theoretically, we should go out and crush them. And there might be a lot of players committed to Memphis after this as we get the right result. That's going to lead to us landing eight prospects, including tight end Brent Russ. So we are going to have a starting tight end next season. And who would have ever thought that we'd be within 100 points on tight end Chaz Henry? I think it's a winnable battle, but we have tough games coming up. And I really want to hop into that road game versus East Carolina, but I need to save it for some of these division matchups. Even if we lose this game, we could still make the American Conference Championship, but we get the win. And that means that we're going to continue climbing up in the polls. Now, if you've seen my Alaska rebuild, you would know that there's now a playoff tool where I can put 14 teams in the playoffs. So all we have to do is make sure that we finish inside the top 14. And as the weeks go on, we continue to sign players we need like tackle Alfonso Lowe. We're losing a ton of seniors at the end of the year, so we have to make sure their replacements are lined up. And I love that the sun is finally out at our own stadium. We seem to play better in those conditions as we've already gotten two tutties and our offense is on fire against this defense. So far, Cortez Gibson's done whatever he's wanted to against them as he makes that throw. And I'm hoping this play action works to get somebody open, which it did. Dominique Kai, our senior tight end, made the catch for our third touchdown. But our defense has been the real story about this game as we're getting stop after stop. I thought this game was going to be a battle for us, but we've just been dominating them in every facet. So going into the half, we're probably going to be up 28 to zero. And I'm going to let Cortez Gibson throw here where he has his running back open and that's it. To be honest, he might be having the best game as a quarterback in Memphis history because as of right now, his stats are wild. And by the time you all see them at the end of the game, you're going to be stunned that he was able to put up some numbers like this. The goal is for him to pass for a sixth touchdown on this drive and that's going to happen. And North Texas responded back. So he gets to do the exact same thing, but we ran out of the end zone. That could have been his seventh touchdown of the day, but now we have to work a little harder for it. And here on third and goal, it's man to man coverage, but nothing got open. He's going to take the sack. That really wasn't ideal, but it's better than him turning the ball over. He is going to step up in the pocket and maybe thread the needle, but he was off target. So even though he had the best game that he's ever had in his career, he wasn't able to get his seventh touchdown. Because of it, he wouldn't win NCAA Player of the Week, but he would win American Conference Player of the Week. And all we have to do is make sure that we don't drop two more conference games, because then we'd find ourselves in the conference championship and we take down Tulsa. You're also going to notice that besides Chaz Henry, there's nobody on the board I really care about. And that's because we've been able to get all these JUCOs to commit. So I'm really happy happy with how this class has turned out. I think we're going to be able to get the tight end as well because we just unlocked Kitchen Sink 3 and that allows us to put up to 700 points in a Chaz Henry. We're still able to hop into one more game during the regular season, but unless we lose one, we might
might not have to until the conference championship. So I'm just gonna send it for a few weeks, hope for the best, and that's good. This is the quickest that I've been able to turn around a team that had no players on the roster before. And it's made me want to recruit more JUCOs in the future, but as you can see, we've sealed our spot in the conference championship. So we've at least taken that step forward that I was hoping we could, but Tulane took us down. And that alone might be enough to knock us out of the playoffs. I mean, we're 13th in the coaches poll, but this one no longer matters. And I cannot believe that that one loss just did this to us. I was so confident with how things were going. And now if we lose to Rice, our season's pretty much over. We'd still make the conference championship, but this is a playoff level team. And all these seniors on the roster deserve to make it at least once. I'd love to say I'm not going to let that loss ruin it for us, but they have scored 20 straight. So we're down 20 to seven and everything has collapsed so fast, even though we got off to such a good start. Maybe this roster is not as good as I thought it was, but we were dominating. And after the win against Tennessee, I just assumed we'd beat everybody else. Rice is fighting to make a bowl game right now and they fake us out with the read option. And that's been our issue. We just can't get them off of the field, even though we're all over them. But I think we finally did it there. And I've been trying so hard to get us into field goal range. We're going to have to complete this pass if it's going to be a reality. And that was exactly how it needed to go. To end the half, it's going to be 20 to 17, assuming this goes in. And that's not the end of the world. But I won't lie. I did get a little bit worried after they scored 20 straight points against us. And can we get some blocks? I don't know what our guys were doing there, but it clearly was not working. And things are starting to look a little bit better. We're going to get the sack. So that's a huge defensive hold there. And we've been driving down the field as well. The bubble screen didn't get as open as I would have liked, but we'll be fine as long as we can get a touchdown out of this drive. And you can tell that the Owls are starting to lose some hope. They scored 20 straight on us, but we're about to score 24 straight. And let's just make sure we finally punch it in. We fought back so hard, but then we took care of business. And that's what you'd expect out of a playoff team. But I figured we'd be going into the conference championship undefeated. And that last win has put us back up to number 12 in the college football playoff poll. That's all I can ask for. And I think the battle with Chaz Henry is going to go on to the off season. So we can win it from there. And this should be a cakewalk. Navy's seven and five, but they went seven and one in conference play. And all of their losses out of conference were against ranked schools. Now I no longer think this is going to be super easy, but at least we get to host it in our own stadium. And so far, neither team's been able to get a defensive stop. We've both been able to score two touchdowns. So that just means it's going to be a shootout. And it shows that our defense isn't ready for the playoffs, but I don't care because our offense clearly is. Remember, if we don't win this game, we don't get in. So we have got to figure things out. And we're only going to leave Navy a minute left on the clock in the half. Travis Weaver's been excellent all season for us. And Navy couldn't score to end the first half here in the third quarter. On third and nine, he somehow finds a receiver off his back foot. And that's the type of stuff I've been dealing with all day. They also are passing it a lot more than they should, but we just haven't had an answer for it. Here on third and five, again, they're throwing the ball. We have man-to-man -man coverage out there. It finally worked, and they are forced to just take their three. I have been waiting for this moment for a while now, but now they've decided to step things up defensively, and we have our deep post route. That's a beautiful read. Ed Cody has gotten open, and 28 is the only person on the field that can catch him, but he isn't going to. Like I said, Ed Cody has been fantastic out of the slot, and I hope that Navy is starting to lose all the hope they've had previously. They're trying to go deep in double coverage, but our defense just clamped them up, and I kind of want to try to bomb their defense over the top again. That was super enjoyable. We're going for it, and who is on the end of it? Ed Cody. He is streaking free, and he is gone. If one player has won this conference championship for us, it's him, but I got a little carried away because Navy is fighting back at the end of the game, and we're only up by five points with two and a half minutes left, which is not a good thing. We're going to have to rush for a first down or two, and this would be our first one, I'd hope, but the refs didn't give it to us, and that's actually better because if we get this, it is going to be all over. I know it's not been long, but our fans deserve this, and Navy played a good game against us, but it was about time that we took home the American Conference Championship, and even though he wasn't in the Heisman race, Cortez Gibson had a great year. It makes sense that because he put up numbers like that, Joe Corbett would regress a bit, but Travis Weaver excelled, going from 300 receiving yards to over 1,000. We also got so many sacks as a team with David Keller having 11 and a half, and that was the most in the country, but it wasn't enough for him to win any awards. I think it's because we didn't finish as a top team in the country, but of course, our first playoff game is against Tennessee, and the committee's really gonna make us beat them twice in one year. I don't know if they thought our win earlier in the season was a fluke or something, but it might have been because we're already down 7-0, to zero and Tennessee is about to score another touchdown. We have not opened this game up the same way we did previously, but we're gonna find Weaver, and he's gonna shed one tackle already. So our number one receiver's trying to get us down the field, but we're gonna have to go to other players like Ed Cody, who spins out of there and he's gone. Cortez Gibson must have set a record or something as well because it's showing this screen. And he has the most touchdowns in Memphis school history. Here on third and 10, it looks like Tennessee is going to go with a little bit of a play action fake and we should be able to pick this. But even if we couldn't, we still got the stop we wanted and we'd score a touchdown pretty quickly after that. So it's 14 all now. We got off to a slow start, but we've crawled our way back into this. And here on second and 14, they're trying to go with the long pass, but all they could do was take their flat. I'm really hoping that we're able to hold them to just three 
points. They go for the corner route though, and I don't think he got a foot in. Tennessee's not even reviewing it. They're kicking three. So that works out well for us, especially if they're going to press Ed Cody, and I got hit as I was throwing it. I think we would have had a touchdown there, but instead they got the stop. And I'm not going to lie, that changes a lot for us. It's not looking as good as it once was. With a big drive to end this first half though, we'd be right back in it, and that's down to the four. So it's not the end of the world if we could just finish it off, and I think I had somebody. Cortez Gibson saw it late though, and with this play, I can't step up in the pocket, or maybe I can. He's a slow QB, but he was still able to fight his way into the end zone. And to start this third quarter, we've been flying down the field, but that's going to be picked off. It was placed badly, and that's the second time Gibson's gotten an interception against us. We cannot keep making these mistakes if we're going to win at all. And it's starting to seem like this season's going to end in this game unless we start to figure things out. We cannot go out like this to the Volunteers after we beat them earlier in the season. That's another good catch from Reese. But we still have to get into the end zone, and that's what Joe Corbett's going to do here. Tennessee's offense doesn't want to be stopped, though. So thankfully, we just got them to a third and 13. And here we go. Will we hold them to just a field goal? That is all we need in this situation. But what would make things even better is if he shanked this and he didn't. I can definitely tell that they're sending the house on third and 12, but they kind of faked me out because they didn't and I just hit the wrong button. So we have to go for it on fourth and 12. We don't have an option here and it's held on to. The pressure is starting to build. There is so much on the line right now. And this is only the first of four rounds in the playoffs if we were to somehow go on to win it all. Even though it seemed like it could be, this might actually not be our season. And on third and seven, I just wanted to take the slant, but I couldn't and now I got to throw it away. That was not pretty. The pressure is on and this is going to be held on to. But even if we score, we're going to leave the volunteers with so much time left. And I'm actually glad that we didn't get in there because now there's only 25 seconds left. So that gives us a much better chance at stopping them. I'm not sure what I want to do defensively, but instead of passing, they decided to hand it off and that's going to lead to a massive run. They've gashed our defense and you know what? I think we just have to let them get into the end zone and then try to get a point of our own. By the time we could have stopped them, they were already in field goal range. And I think it's time to put our fastest receiver in at the slot position, burning his red shirt. This is the first time he stepped onto the field, but I don't know what else to do. They've gone with single high coverage. We're going to break the sack and oh my gosh, he's actually broken free. Please tell me you're quick enough. Unfortunately, he just got caught, but we've set ourselves up to have one shot at the end zone and I don't like this look. I like this one a lot more. I'm not sure what type of defense they're in right now, but we're going to try to beat them deep and that corner got back to it, but he catches it. And Sean Cunningham in two plays has just sent us on to the next round. I have never had an ending crazier than that in any of these videos. And I like legitimately don't even know how to react. How was he able to pull this off for us? We should not be moving on to the quarterfinals right now, but we are, and I'm going to make sure that kid starts for the rest of it. He is our new slot receiver after that. And to make things even better on our side of the bracket, the 12 and 13 seed also won. We just have to somehow get past Notre Dame and the fighting Irish haven't lost a game all season, but we have a new secret weapon at wide receiver and his name is Sean Cunningham. After how that last one ended, I'm so confident. So it doesn't even bug me that the Irish are undefeated because I think we're going to go out and beat them either way. And on this first third and three, they're going to throw an interception straight to us. Kenny Minchie is not having a good day, but Cortez Gibson is with his new wide receivers out there and we're down inside the 10. I don't think we could have opened up things any better as that's a touchdown. And now we just need our defense to get some more stops. It's not going to come as easy as the last one, but it is third and two. And what are you doing Garrett to get burnt like that? I've been running strictly man, and it has worked for the most part, but we're going to have to figure things things out here on second and goal still. And Kenny Minchie felt like he had nobody open. Third down now from the five, and they really just handed it off against us. So we're going to hold Notre Dame to just a field goal. And my plan is to maintain this lead for the rest of the game, which I think we're fully capable of doing. We have a high powered offense that is not going to make any mistakes. Sean Cunningham catches this. And now I'm expecting our running back to help us just punch it in. But Joe Corbett couldn't. So it is third and three, and I'm going to take the hitch route. Even if we don't pick up this fourth and goal, they'd be in terrible field positioning. And come on, I probably should have been smarter than that because now they have the ball. And on third and one, they have decided to pass it, but we just swatted it down. It's going to be a low scoring first half, but that's what you'd expect out of two good defenses. And here on third and 12, I'm going to wait to see if that post route gets open, but we fumble it away to them. And with that frustration still carrying over, I went for it on this fourth and one. This entire game's been about defense and we're going to get a stop here. So Notre Dame still hasn't scored a touchdown, but I just want to have one big play versus them and it's not going to come. We can't get it out. It's hard to believe that we're still in this game, but I think we're going to pick up this third and 14. And those out routes alone have saved our season because I've been taking them over and over. However, it's fourth and inches now and we failed two fourth down conversions, but I'm convinced we can pick at least one up. So we're going into the fourth quarter with some momentum and that is going to be dropped. Sean Cunningham had that one in his hands, but it was a tough catch to make. So I'm not going to be too upset about it. And we just need to pick up this third and four where the drag has been left open. Sean Cunningham catches it and he's in. Now our defense just has to get Notre Dame off the field. And on second and 12, they've decided 
to run it again. A.O. Campbell's been all over it all day. So I'm surprised they did that. They're going to have to pick up a lot on this third and 16, and all they did was check it down versus us. I have a feeling they're going to kick their three, but I don't think this is the right move. They have to trust their defense. With three timeouts left, they're hoping to get a stop, and they've been able to do it all day, but now we're going to pass it when they're not expecting it, setting us up for third and five. I have multiple routes out there on the field that I want to take, but that's going to be what we went with, and Ed Cody just put us on to the semifinals. It hasn't been pretty, but we keep finding ways to win, and we're just a game away from the championship. As for our opponent, it's either a 12 or 13 seed, and I'd love to get some revenge against Florida State, but they'd lose this one by 13, so we're going to have to play Michigan instead. I can't be too upset about that, though, because they are a 12 seed, and at a 93 overall, you'd think I'd be concerned, but we just took down a 97, and I know that we can beat anybody. Playing in the rain shouldn't be an issue for us. We've done that multiple times this season. We just got to generate some pressure, and how did they have so much time? I mean, our defensive line is pretty good, so I was expecting us to get in there a little bit quicker, but it all works out in the end, and I just threw this into coverage. I don't know what I was thinking. I can't just play well and cruise to an easy win in any of these playoff games, but we're going to get it right back with Garrett. And you know what? I think we're going to have them deep as they were trying to press us to force an easy stop. Weaver has broken free. He is a little bit quicker than number 20, and look at that. What a touchdown. 95 yards to the house is going to put us up 7-0 to early on, and he's also setting a school record. But Michigan did not like that, and they just had to throw it away here. This one's playing out just like the Notre Dame game did, and I'd love if we could have a little bit more offensive success because that'd make our life easier. But I also know there's only two minutes left in the half, so we could run out the rest of the clock, and no, we're not. We're just going to go for the end zone instead. If we could just stop them here, that would turn out to be the right decision. They threw it straight at us, but we didn't get the animation that we should have there, and I am calling some timeouts. I want to have a minute on the clock to put up more points before the end of the first half, assuming that they don't get anything here, and it's going to play out exactly how I was hoping it would. We'd get it a little bit past midfield, but now it's fourth and five, and I am just attacking the cover too. So that could have gone bad if Travis Weaver didn't hold on to the football, but we're going to have our wheel route to take it to the one. I wish we could just hand it off, but we're going to have to quick hike it and then throw it, and it works out either way because we're up by two possessions. The first half ended the way that I was hoping it would, and here in the third quarter, that deep post is going to be caught. So Travis Weaver's just doing it all now, and I'm so glad that we were able to keep him around. He's been a great receiver. He has almost 200 receiving yards in this game alone, and there's Sean Cunningham putting us up by 22 points. For Michigan to come back now, they can't make any mistakes, but they still think they're better off just running the football, and it's made our defense look so good. They must have an offensive coordinator that runs the option or something. I've never seen them come out in this formation before, but that's what they've been doing. And A.O. Campbell just got his second sack of the game. They are not going to reach the end zone. So it's all over. This team of Juco's going on to the natty. I think we're able to win it all with this team, but it's still not a given because both these teams are undefeated. And no matter who comes out on top, we're going to have a tough matchup. It looks like Clemson is going to end up winning by one. So we're going to have to face the Tigers. And I am fine with that, but they are a 99 overall team. On paper, it might look like we have a big disadvantage, but with how this team is playing, I'm not concerned. And like our entire starting lineup is seniors, so we're either going to have to win it now or two to three years later. If we could just play well for one more game, I think this would be the fastest rebuild in channel history. But this roster could also not be good enough because they've already scored. What we've done against other teams has not worked so far, but at least we're going to take it inside the 10. Weaver spins out a defender, and I know our offensive line is not better than Clemson's defensive line, so we should have never handed that football off, and it's okay. It's crazy that going into the playoffs, Sean Cunningham was a redshirt, and now he's a starter, but we just stopped them on defense. So we've got it back, and on third and 10, I had to try to fit it into that window. We were bound to make a mistake, but I was hoping it wouldn't come that soon. If we hit them backwards, they're going to lose a lot. And here on second and goal, I know that they're going to probably thread it up the middle. So I don't know why I left that wide receiver open for a second touchdown. Now we find ourselves in a third and eight. The play action worked wonders though. Sean Cunningham has to be faster than this DB and he dropped it. I'm not sure if I can excuse a mistake like that. I think he's going to have to go back on the bench. Nobody else on our team would get behind the defense in that way, but it still should have been intercepted there. And what is happening? happening right now. We're getting so close to making some amazing plays that would give us a chance at winning this. And now that it's third and goal, Clemson is going to throw it short where we make the tackle. They're playing this pretty passively, but we also haven't done much offensively. And on third and 10, I'm going to throw it to Sean Cunningham again, but he drops it. I really don't want to bench him, but if he makes another mistake in this third quarter, I'm going to have to do it. And that was such a big fourth down catch for us. Now we're just going to look over to our running back to get 10 more, but we have not reached the end zone yet. And I'm going to take it to Sean Cunningham again. He might have made some mistakes, but he's also redeemed himself. And then they return to kickoff for a touchdown. So I am not happy right now, but we do have them beat deep. Sean Cunningham this time is going to drop it again, and he's got to get off the field. He had a good run, but he's never seeing it again. And this entire game's in the hands of our defense, because if they're not able to get multiple stops on Clemson, we're going to lose the national championship. Now that was a decent punt, but by the time they pick it up, they're still going to get it to like the 35-yard line. And on 
first and 10 they just handed off where they've gotten some perfect blocks, so it looks like they're about to get a huge gain against us. We would eventually get them to a third and nine, but that might not mean anything if we can't stop them. And it would have been so nice if they ended up taking the sack there. That is short though. So their kicker must not be very good, and that is gonna be a touchdown. I had to thread the needle to get that to work, but we have been on a tear recently. What are our zones doing? And I can't believe this drive is still alive for Clemson, but we're all over this. And I wonder what they do on fourth and one. They should definitely be going for this right here, but instead they're punting it back to us. It's not even a good one. And it's going to be a tight finish, but we could take the lead if we have a good drive. They keep getting us to these third down situations, but this time I'm going to take the curl route. And I just realized that if we start chewing the clock now, they wouldn't have much time left by the time we score. I remember how the game against Tennessee went and we really shouldn't have won that. But the reason they even scored in the first place is because we left way too much time left on the clock. And now we've got it down inside the four. I don't know how to handle this because I don't want to score too quickly, but I also didn't want to lose three yards. And on second and goal, I'm just going to take it over to our backup running back, see what he can do. He breaks a tackle and he's in. That's the first time that I've seen Courtney Samuel's name. And I think we're going to be good as long as they don't get something fluky happening on this Hail Mary. I would probably delete the game if they caught that. But they didn't, so I've won a championship with all Jucos. And this happened a lot sooner than I thought it would. For whatever reason, there was no celebration. And that's my favorite part, but it is what it is. We still had a historic run through those playoffs. And I also won Coach of the Year in the process. As for what players went drafted, A.O. Campbell got drafted in the second round, while Aaron Powers went in the seventh. And this was a fun concept to use JUCOs only, but what I've learned from it is I should start using more JUCOs in future rebuilds.